Can you identify as a black person? No. Why? Because I'm not black. I'm not a woman, but I can identify as, as a woman according to you. If you transition, maybe. What defines a transition? If that's your goal, you know? If you believe it. Sure. If you believe you're black, why aren't you black? Well, that's just not, that's like genetics. That's like ancestry. You're also born a man or a woman. It's the same thing. That's also genetics. Okay, I'm over it. <laughs> And said, Chase, would you rather smash the hottest trans woman in the world or the oldest woman in the world? Honestly, bro, the oldest woman in the world, because then I wouldn't be gay. Are you like, uh, uh, Chase, yeah. how dare you be transphobic? Yes, actually, what the f do you mean? Because if I had sex with a trans woman, I'd be having sex with a biological man, and I don't want to do that. Because I'd be say, gay if I had sex with a biological gay. man. That's not gay. That's gay. And I don't even catch up the f up, actually. I'm, I'm Why is that a media car at all? I mean, that's really hateful, she's bro. Not, she's not. She's not. Would technically be homosexual. A trans woman is a biological man. Sue me. It's true. Yeah. You know what God said? It said he made the man and women. Who knew that stating biological facts would make people walk off the show? The reality is, despite the fact that women might feel more vulnerable or might feel less safe, doesn't actually mean it's that not they a actually. Feeling. Yo, you need to stop interrupting, please. Let me finish my point. Just because you might feel more unsafe doesn't mean that in actuality you actually are more unsafe than men are. And if you look at crime statistics, men are more likely to be victims of violent crime. And you sat there saying, by which gender? By which males. Gender but I was saying that women are just scared of different like small things that men will not think about are not going to have in the back of their minds as so, somebody who's been physically assaulted yes i am very aware of like if i go outside that i could be physically assaulted it's completely that's not valid. just a woman thing women will frequently argue you don't have to be worried about going out at night and getting jumped actually yes men do we so, do well, need men though we do we don't need them we then, do then, no because then lesbians who do you call to get your car fixed? A man or a woman? Your toilet breaks down. Who do you call? A so man I, or a woman? I fix my own car. I can, I can okay. do. I'm who, most who, mechanics. Your I power, your power supply. Who runs it? Who runs the infrastructure of society? Men or women? Oh, at the moment, men. Obviously, yeah. so, of patriarchy. So we, so, of, of, because of patriarchy. Because of patriarchy. Oh no. Oh, no. But, <laughs> The vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a very, labor. very tiny proportion of men and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like Where's the dominance here, precisely? Face? <laughs> I don't, you shouldn't have hit. No. You shouldn't have hit yeah. first. You're not a child, you're a grown woman. Yeah. You were grown. It's one, it's one because thing. Because one hit from a man can knock her on, she'll die. No, but, but why does he have to be considered for her after he's she's not done? Because you're an equal is, opportunity is, fighter. No, no, and this is what I said. It, equity. Like a man, this is, let's not forget the fact that a man is way, way physically stronger than a woman. That's why women are exposed to that. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Listen, listen. I get that. I get that. But this is what I'm just about to say. If that is the case, I think it's extremely irresponsible to tell somebody to do something like hit her back just as no, hard hey, hey, because hey 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 
I did not say hit her back. I said knock I that did. bitch out. Which is <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, do you know? Don't put the wrong listen, words in listen. Mouth. I'll tell you an example. I'll tell you an example. She knows what she said, bitch. No, no. I'll give you an example. Yeah. Um. This uh, we have like four. no culture, so like, what are Wait, like what? white people have no culture? Beethoven, Mozart, Chopin, Schubert, Bach. There's Mendelsohn. a base that Mozart Americans? was black. There's what? so much yeah, culture in Europe. Yeah, that's a good point. Like Jesus. when you think white people culture in America, what is it? Potato salad, Starbucks. They brought when they were over raping culture and pillaging. from Europe, and then Wait, inside what? of the United States, all over you can see collectives of this from Europeans who settled in the South, which has some of its own unique culture. If you go west, it has its own unique culture, and then on the east coast, same thing. So yeah, they brought over a lot of things, but it was a hodgepodge of European heritages. So there's definitely some culture here in the US for sure. Women's rights, but we can't define what a woman is, but also men can be women. And no uterus, no opinion, but also men can get pregnant. Men are oppressing us, but also it's okay if biological men take over our spaces and our sports. Women are so over-sexualized in this culture, but it's empowering if women are the ones sexualizing themselves. Are you guys quite done yet? Like, are you okay? That just about sums it up. This is my friend Brianna Robinson. You should absolutely go follow her. She's fabulous. It's incredibly hypocritical, as everything is. Modern day feminism is not consistent in the slightest. Somebody commented and said, high empathy and low IQ generally correlate with feelings over facts. I mean, that's the basis of modern day feminism. Rhonda, Lauren down here from the Herald Sun again. Um, just another quick one about Angela's question on equality just before. Um, we've got quite a large pay dispute happening with our Australian women's soccer team at the moment. Um, is it frustrating for you as someone who's so prominent in your sport, and we heard you say on the Ellen Show the other day you are the richest fighter in UFC, that that sort of thing is still going on? I think that how much you get paid should have something to do with how much money you bring in. I'm the highest paid fighter, not because Dana and Lorenzo wanted to do something nice for the ladies. <laughs> they do it because I bring in the highest numbers. They do it because I make them the most money. And I think that the money that she, they make should be proportionate to the money that they bring in. Hi guys. Like, I'm so sad right now because I just came to like a realization these past few days have been so hard for me. Cause like, you know how men say that women have toxic feminism and like you'll get to a certain age and like no one will want to marry you and no one will love you. Like, I feel like I've gotten to that point guys. Like I was so hung on to this feminism thing and I missed out on marriage and on children. And now, like, I'm at a point in my life where, like, I'm so bitter. I'm so jealous of people who have marriages because they are so happy and their husbands don't even cheat on them. And, like, men are just the best. You know, like, right now is when I'm realizing, like, I can't do without them. And right now I'm like, I don't care, like, if you are rich or poor, tall, dark, handsome, ugly, me, I don't care, by the way. As long as you're a man and you're breathing, like that's the only qualification I need because I'm just so desperate for a husband. Like there's a lot of pressure around me. So if you can deal me and propose, I swear I'll be here and I'll marry you immediately. I'll wash your clothes, I'll cook for you, I'll have your children and I'll be obedient. Are men trash? Oh, cis, heterosexual men, absolutely, especially white men. What rights do you think that men have that women don't today? A woman can still walk a street and not feel protected versus a man can. Women are probably like underrepresented. Like it started off with great intent, but you have people who abuse the system. It's a hatred of masculine energy. It's like anti-men. No, nothing gets done in a woke society. There's this video of like a conference going on. Hi, I am Andy P uh, from Los Angeles, they, them pronouns. Um, there was a previous point of privilege about waving around signs. And then another guy gets up and he's like, I just like to say to all the people chattering in the audience, I have sensory issues, so I need you all to be quiet while each person is speaking. And Hi, James Jackson, Sacramento DSA, he, him. 
I have already asked people to be mindful of the chatter of their comrades who are sensitive to sensory overload, and that goes double for the heckling and the hissing. It is also triggering to my anxiety. It's like, well, don't call them guys because they might not be guys. They're <laughs> girls and boys and they thems and non-binaries and all this stuff. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. And it's like, this is how it would go in a society structured to benefit wokeism and political correctness. Protect feminism or low gas prices? Oh, I'm always about lowering the gas prices for sure. Why? Absolutely. Uh, well, I think feminism is a demonic movement created by Satan to emasculate men, to get them out of the biblical order that God created. Um, and I don't even drive like a gas powered car. I drive a Tesla. I just don't like feminism. Hell yeah. I love a man that is unafraid to be honest about this stuff because we're all lying to ourselves if we think modern day feminism is doing anything productive and if it's making like happy, peppy, wonderful women and strong men. It's really not. Somebody replied and said he just wants to lower gas prices so he can reach them. Somebody else said dude has SBBB. Small body, big brain. I'm here for it. Short king rules. But here's Megan Rapinoe complaining that she does the same work as a man and doesn't get paid the same as a man. Four World Cup championships and four Olympic gold medals for the United States. And despite those wins, I've been devalued, I've been disrespected, and dismissed because I am a woman. And I've been told that I don't deserve any more than less because I am a woman. You see, despite all the wins, I'm still paid less than men who do the same job that I do. They don't do the same job that you do. They don't, you know how I know? Because Megan Rapinoe, anytime you want, you can go play on the men's team. You can try. You can try. After all, gender is a, so, it's a, it's a social construct. We've been informed by the left that gender does not exist. It's completely a social construct. So since gender is a social construct, anytime Megan Rapinoe wants, she can go try and play with the men. That is not going to go great for Megan Rapinoe. She is not doing the same work that a man is doing. No. Okay, so you guys are more so stuck on the double standard component of it, it seems. Word? Wait, may I ask a question? Huh? May I ask a question? Sure. For you two, um, what would you say is, what is the ideal woman's body count in your opinion? Like ideal? the average? Average, the average ideal, and what do you guys, what do you guys think personally for yourself? Ideal? I, well, ideal is zero. Ideal is zero, zero. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say zero. ideal is zero. Okay. Zero. Real, realistic low Can body mean? count, like a realistic low body count, yeah. less than 10. Yeah. Like realistic, mm -hmm. less than okay, 10. interesting. Okay. Are you you trying to reveal something, Cynthia? Oh, What's no. going on? Just What's going curious. on through I, through that brain of yours? And What's look, and look, I have dated, I've dated some girls with some fucking high body counts. <laughs> I have, I've overlooked it, but it's just mm -hmm. not. It's not your ideal, right? It's not your ideal situation. Like if I told you, you tell me your ideal guy, you're gonna be like, he's six foot five, he's Jack, he's handsome, and he lives in a trailer. No, you're gonna want mm -hmm. the total package, right? So that's the same thing. It's just when we talk about preference. It's oh. important. Like people will tell you it's not, but like we as guys, like it's built in our DNA. Just like when you look at a guy that's like fat, bald, lives at home with his parents and has no job, you're like, no, I'm not going to let this guy have sex with me ever, 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 ever. The same thing when we find out that we like a girl and we find out like, oh shit, she has kind of been around the block and one of my friends may have fucked her. You know, that's a conversation. We have to sit there and be like, oh. And it's, it's the worst when you really like the girl, too. And then you find out because they've been lying. So there, there is certainly a reputational component to a high body count, too. Like, it, if someone's just slept with your entire friend group, it's just, I don't know. It's not, well, not great. We have the girls that we pass around, and we're not necessarily saying, you know, the best things about those kind of girls. Oh, well, I mean, I'm not, I don't, if, if I know one of my buddies so, hooked up with a girl, it's just, I'm so not. So use the girl for your convenience, but then when she's out, you're not f***ing her anymore. It's, oh, she's a slut, she's this, she's that. Right after I sex traffic her, yes, correct. Did I say <laughs> sex traffic? Uh, <laughs> well, it, I, I almost wonder if this is an issue of semantics for some of you, because at the start of the conversation, a lot of you said, you think hookup culture is bad. Well, what coincides with hookup culture? Having a lot of sexual partners. Broken families, people who don't know how to manage relationships. 
Why do you look at me? Just in general. Why do you think I come from a broken family? Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't say that. You look at you've been hinting that the whole time. Well, I think time. you guys have been flirting with each other the whole show, oh, so no. I've been looking he, at all of these girls. Like I've been making eye contact with you, you, No, you, but you've been you. picking on me the whole uh, time. Just can, can, can. <laughs> Dolce, why don't you introduce yourself to the mm -hmm. class? Oh, good. Okay? Hi, my name's Dolce with two eyes. I feel anxious when I'm high. I feel like I need to quote Jordan Peterson here. Not beautiful. <laughs> it's just, it's sad. Because so many young women are preyed upon and are taught that, you know, their femininity is wrong. And in order to be successful, they have to be so masculine and like literally destroy their bodies. You don't. That is an utter lie. Ian Chong replied and said, there's a Brazilian account that does comparisons of students before and after they entered college. That is horrifying. This is what happens whenever you ask a transgender activist to explain even the basic premise of the movement is they'll immediately say, well, who cares? Why, why are you so obsessed with this? I'm not obsessed with this. I'm not the one who started sending men into the women's bathroom and taking away their trophies and castrating kids. I'm perfectly happy with the way things have worked for thousands of years. It is the transgender activists who are trying to upend everything. And so I think it's, it is at least my right to ask the question, okay, what is the premise of your movement? But they always deflect from that. They always withdraw from the debate. They always try to change the subject because there is no answer. So you ask me, well, what's the purpose of, why, why do you even care? What's the purpose of knowing someone's biological sex? Well, for starters, because we have civil rights specifically for women in the United States. We have special bathrooms for women. We have special sports leagues for women. We have all sorts of special places and rights and privileges and, and that are for women that are not for men. So if now some men, the people who at the very least appear to be men, are claiming a right to go into those women's bathrooms, rooms, then they, we either have to abolish all of the special rights and privileges that have existed for women for all of human history and are enshrined in our law, or they need to explain to me how those men are actually women. And they can't do the latter, and I'm not willing to do the former, and I don't think women across this country are willing to do the former, even if a few people have been so ideologically blinded that they, that they would give in to this kind of an absurdity. Men do not menstruate. Only women menstruate. Now, you can call yourself Cis whatever you want. Cis men don't menstruate, but trans men do menstruate. No, Same they as don't. Same as non-binary people. <clears throat> Only women. Menstruating is not exclusive yes, to it cis is. women. No, it's not. Yes, it is. So explain you're, to me as to why my body menstruated are, at some point. If your chromosomes are XX and you're young, you menstruate. Cool. If you're XY, you don't. Correct, but what about trans men and non-binary? We're not excluding men. a whole group of they're, people They're women that dressed menstruate. as men. Well, what's a man to you? You define a man for me. You have chromosomes that are X and Y. That's what a man is. So why are we just looking at the, 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 the science of this as an the example? Science. When we've learned sex and gender identity are two very, they're completely different things. They're not completely different They are things. completely different. They're completely different words. And sex is what you're born with, the sexual reproductive organs you have. Gender is what you identify with. They're completely different Well, I don't accept things. that distinction. You have to argue for it. You're just giving a conclusion. You're, you're just making it up. Oh my god, you're a pick me. This makes so much sense. In five years, we'll watch your videos and cringe. It's okay. I love how she insults me for commenting under her video saying that sometimes men won't see when they're in the wrong. And she got so upset over it. I love how I'm the pick me when every single one of your videos are about dating men. At least I don't make that my personality. You also put men down for female validation, so that is being a pick me. You are a grown woman starting drama with a 15 year old. All I want to say is I'm the bigger one, but I'm not supposed to be because you're literally the bigger one in this situation because you're older than me. I honestly do hope five years from now, I look back and think that what I'm doing is cringy because that'll show how much I've grown. You decided to insult my character because you couldn't insult my point. She gets up and she says, Patrick, this is very hard for me to say this. Mm -hmm. and let me tell you why it's very hard. I said, what's that? She says, ever since in high school, I wanted to prove to men that I can beat them. So when I graduated high school and college, I opened up my salon. We do very well. I've made millions of dollars. 
my people and my work uh, that, that work at the salon, they do very well for themselves. I drive a nice car. I have a nice house. I have money. I have millions. I don't worry about any of that stuff. You know what decision I made last night? I said, what's that? She says, I want a husband. I no longer want to compete with men. Mm-hmm. I need them. And I'm like, what? She's saying this in front of 2,000 people with her sister sitting right next to her. Wow. And now she's getting emotional. How many 65-year-old women do we have to hear saying that I march with the feminist movement and I bought into the fact that men are the enemy. I've never been married. I'm alone and I'm miserable and I wish I would have never bought into that philosophy. When the looks start to fade from a woman who is quite plain, she sees it as life. When the looks start to fade um, with an attractive woman, she sees it as disastrous because a lot of the power has gone. So they might, not always, but they, they might respond to it with a lot more insecurity. How to put a Karen in place. Are you? A star away from the other people, you hear me? And if you stay in this f***ing chair, get the f*** out. She got a taste of her own medicine and a bit more. She was screaming in that woman's face. I don't know why, but it's unnecessary. She knew she fucked up because she started walking back when he was coming towards her. She was doing that corner of the aisle of like, oh shit, he's coming for me. She sits down. <laughs> and this guy, this guy goes in. A star away from the other people, you hear me? And if you stay in this f***ing chair, get the f*** out. Do that again, I'll kick you out myself. She got made to feel like a 10 year old girl again, like her dad just told her off. She sat there for the rest of the night, didn't open her mouth and didn't move an inch. <laughs> Definitely learned a lesson that day. Shout out to Paul Bluff. Give that man a pay rise. In today's polarized world, is feminism dead? You guys saw your hand. I think that depends on the definition of feminism. <laughs> I strongly think that feminism is more of an action than an identity. I would say it's uplifting all women, in which case it's very alive. At the same time, um, if we do follow that definition, feminism has splintered off into so many different areas that you can look at um, people like Sheryl Sandberg who say you should just get another nanny if you feel oppressed. And if we're talking <laughs> about that kind of feminism, um, yeah, it's pretty dead. I think feminism um, isn't actually about equality. It's about equality when it benefits us. I think feminism is really about women wanting special privileges and treatment at the expense of men often. And I think it's alive and well, sadly. Let's see the truth's explanation for why women earn less money than men on average. Oh, oh tart, tart, the misogyny. But fear not. Using my truth, watch as I'm now able to pull from my own source and say women earn less because of... Um, <coughs> oh, oh, oh. Let's see what we got here. The Patriarchy. Why Gen Z men reject feminism? Why are Gen Z men saying f off to feminism? Yesterday, BBC News shared an article that showed the widening gap between Gen Z men and Gen Z women, with a particular trend showing that Gen Z women are becoming more progressive and Gen Z I men. I saw the graph. Yeah. Remember, it was the two graphs, the one like South Korea, where it was like a huge difference, and like, you know, in the UK and all that. Yeah are becoming more conservative. This is true. Now, this is nothing new. It was shown that this was happening in America before, and it's happening across yeah. the West. And for me, it's incredibly fucking obvious why this is happening. Because feminism and the left in the present day do absolutely nothing to support men. They do the opposite. They demonize, they stigmatize, and they ignore their problems. Why would young men be drawn to an ideology that on the surface, at least, comes across like it hates men for being men? Well, and the, the problem, and this is what I was saying before about how, like, people that are parasites, 
infect things like feminism and then they use it for like their own personal gain. Like there are things in places where like women do have disadvantages and women have legitimate problems. But whenever you have like women who just actually hate men that are like, yeah, I'm a feminist and I hate men, this makes all feminists sound crazy. They want control, yeah, exactly. And so this is a huge issue. And this is what I was saying before about how like one of the big problems with like these spaces like feminism and like, you know, gaming circle jerk is also another really great example. Like we just got done talking about that is that the problem that these people have is that they are unable to regulate their own extremism. So you have people and they're unable to self-regulate and have a consistent ideology. And the ideology always gets co-opted by somebody who is more and more and more extreme. It's easier to take over an existing platform, build one from scratch. I mean, I think that this is, it, it's true, but also it, it gives them a certain level of credibility. How many women directed genocide throughout history? How many men? Well, oh, oh, pretty much all men. I mean, like, and again, it's not about like a lot of guys. You think about it like this. If you're a Gen Z guy, if you're a Zoomer guy, you are 22 years old. You don't want people to hold you responsible for what a guy did 100 years ago. Nobody that was around then is even alive anymore in a lot of these cases like the, everybody that was involved with this is dead. But people are still getting mad at you and holding this against you. What the fuck is this? Nobody wants to be born with original sin. Okay, like they uh, they wrote a whole book about it. So the truth is that that's why people are unhappy about this stuff. And also, I, I think that guys probably like, for example, I think OnlyFans definitely in like the advent of things like OnlyFans definitely like kind of blackpilled a lot of guys whenever it's like, you know, you're a 19 year old guy and you can barely get by, but like your 19 year old, you know, friend that's a girl is able to make like $8,000 a month on OnlyFans just because she's attractive. I think that that really bothers a lot of guys because it is unfair. Uh, now, in my opinion, I don't really think that's a big deal because that's just the way that life is and men and women have different advantages in life. But uh, for a lot of guys, it really bothers them because they don't have the context of being 33 years old like I and a lot of other people in chat do. So that's the difference. And that is not what feminism is meant to be about. In theory, according to some definitions, it is meant to be about gender equality. I but think if you, you want to have a word that's about gender equality, it shouldn't be gendered. To do is chat to the average feminist or see the average feminist influencer on social media <laughs> point out some of the inequalities that men face, such as in the education system, yeah. such as in mental health care, and such as how the economy is changing today with the decline of traditional jobs. Do they care? Well, I think also like any person can observe the fact that there are a lot of resources out there that are explicitly for women, and there are not a equivalent number of resources out there that are exclusive for men. And because of that, a guy who's struggling sees that, and they begin to resent women, because they have an advantage in these circumstances or they have more support in these circumstances, which is a natural response. Again, monkeys can detect unfairness. Not a surprise that guys can do the same thing. No, absolutely not. But what will they do? They will blame men for it. They will say it is the fault of men themselves. It's the patriarchy. Mm -hmm. Men have built this system, therefore it's their fault. But when it comes to women's inequality, it's a systemic problem, which is weird. Because when it's for men's issues, it's them that's the problem. It comes from inside. Yeah. But for women, everything else is outside. Again, it's men's fault. And the reason they do... I th think that men also do this too. This is a huge issue, and I've talked about this a lot, about how, like, guys are... And, like, people in general are, like, so fixated about blaming and putting the responsibility on some sort of, like, outside factor to stop them from having any accountability from their actions. So it's like, oh, I'm not sexualizing myself. You're sexualizing me. I'm just having OnlyFans because I like my body. You know, this is this is also like it's bullshit. But at the same time, there's also guys like, oh, all women are hoes and like it's hoflation. I can't get a girlfriend. It's like you can't get a girlfriend because you keep sending them a picture of your dick randomly. Like, stop doing that. Like not every single bad thing that happens to you in life is a problem with culture. Sometimes you are the agent of your own demise. Sometimes it's your fault that bad things happen to you. This most of the time is because they're fucking ignoramuses. They haven't done their research. They haven't looked at the data. They haven't seen that inequality exists for both men and women and that it's desirable to address both of them. And they also haven't done the own self-reflection to see that the stance they're taking of
pointing the finger at men and blaming- I think that men do the same thing to women too, by the way. Like, obviously, like, uh, I, I think that, like, culturally and socially, women definitely have, like, an advantage in terms of, uh, you know, how many, how many people are, like, agreeing with them and telling them that, like, they're right. And it's much more socially acceptable to say I hate win, uh, men than saying I hate women. But there are a lot of guys that also create this, like, culture around, like, the reason why you have problems in your life is because of women. Well, that's probably not the case. There's probably, like, ten other reasons why you have issues. And people constantly look for that external factor that they can blame for everything else that's wrong in their life. And that's what ends up happening. And so people are like going and seeking out this content that just reaffirms that all of the bad decisions they're making are actually good decisions. I think it's actually crazy how, how blatant I see uh, sexism towards women on Twitter, though. It's definitely somewhat accepted. Well, I think that the reason why you see a lot of sexism towards women is because for a long time, like women would say things or do things that were like very clearly sexist towards men. And then men would like not be able to respond because Twitter was moderated in an extremely like super censorship way. So now that you see guys that are able to say and think what they want, well, then that's what happens. That's what people really think. It's more of a resentment thing. Yeah, it is. It's just an unhealthy. Yeah, I think it's an unhealthy backlash. You're, you're totally right. And, and I think it, it's bad for both groups. And I think also like uh, there are people who basically profit off of you know, making this divide larger. And I, I, I find it to be like a huge problem. Like things like Andrew Tate, etc. Rather than trying to address the problems is a reflection of their own ego and refusal to accept changing information. And the problem with this is, is it's created an enormous vacuum where you have a lack of male support on the left. So it's all come from the yep. right who are not much better either. It's just led yeah, the way for right. this very fixed traditional idea of masculinity, where if you don't conform to it, you're seen as a beta male or a soy boy. Well, he's totally fucking right. I'm glad he said this because this is absolutely fucking true. It's like this is the idea. Like the problem is that and you see this with a lot of these like male influencers and like, you know, manosphere influencers like these people are like what a teenager thinks a guy like a cool guy is. That's always what it is. It's never somebody who like usually has all their life together and like things are going well. It's like the uh, it's like this, you know, like a 14 year old's version of like wh what's a cool guy. Soy boys. Yeah. GTA characters, basically. Yeah. But the left are in complete denial about how they're aiding this side of the right. They are. And they will say something like what I'm saying now as a more neutral observational stance. Mm -hmm is akin to that. They will say that anybody who dares to criticize feminist ideology yeah. or woke ideology must be a Tate supporting right winger. And people can see through that bullshit. They're mm -hmm. sick of it. And guess who most of the people yeah, are? I think that most people don't like to be like, for example, this is what happened with me is like whenever I started criticizing, uh, whenever I started criticizing like some of the, like the sweet baby stuff and like the people on Twitter, like they just start making stuff up about you. Like, it, it, it's not even like they care about what's being said. What they care about is trying to bully you and pressure you into shutting the fuck up. Like, that's what they're trying to do. They're not trying to win an argument. They're trying to shut down an argument. So, yeah, of course people don't want to deal with it. Of course people are pushing back against it because nobody likes to be oppressed. Oh, they're sick of this. The young men, the ones who are being told by those people that they're the bad ones. So what does feminism need to do? Mm -hmm. Start fucking listening to the problems that men are facing and stop pretending that they don't exist because inequality can exist for both sexes. Check out leading male inequality experts like Richard Reeves. Check out the American Institute for Boys and Men. Check out the all-party political group for boys and men. Start looking into the crisis of masculinity. You can read a fantastic article by a feminist author called Christine Ember in the New York Times discussing the problems that men are facing. Because when more feminists start taking male inequality seriously too, because it is not beneficial to society as a whole, then we will have less of this divide. Men are not collectively... Well, that's not going to happen because the reason why is that there's a lot of people who have problems in their own life. And it's a lot easier to sell somebody the solution that it's everybody else's fault than to sell them the solution that it's your fault. So what ends up happening is that the reason why like social media influencers and people that push this information always focus on like, for example, like this is true for a lot of like uh, political content creators, too, is that 
it's like there's always a focus on like, well, you know, you're not successful because of capitalism. Well, maybe in an abstract, that's kind of true or like in some disconnected way. But the real reason why you're not successful because of capitalism is because you spend all day on Twitter talking about it. You're not actually improving your life. You're not trying to make anything better. But if you tell that person that, then they're going to say that, oh, well, now you're against me. And then they leave and they stop consuming your content. So what it does is it creates like what I was talking about with like the toxic self-help meta and like the vicious cycle where people with problems look for self-help on the Internet and self-help on the Internet oftentimes blames an external source. So people are kind of trained into this learned helplessness of never actually improving their life and even being told and having the implication that if you have to improve your life, if somebody's telling you to improve your life, all they're trying to do is uphold a system that's trying to oppress you. So then they become the enemy. Bad as an entire gender. But I'll so tell it's you an entire culture that's created around teaching people learned helplessness and then telling them that it's everybody else's fault for their own bad decisions. You who are collectively bad, people who believe that they are. And what will those people often identify themselves as? Mm, the word begins with an F. The world is the problem, not me. Any solutions? I think the solution to it is to have better family structures. And the reason why I think a lot of guys do this is because they're looking for an internet dad or an internet older brother or uncle. And that's really the problem. I think that the reason why this is happening a lot is because of the lack of family structure and the lack of respectable father figures in media and also in people's personal lives. So they're constantly looking for that, you know, because you don't have like, for example, like I, I was very lucky. I grew up like my dad was a great father figure. And, you know, a lot of the other people in like my family were, too. And, uh, you know, other like friends of my dad, everything like that. So I, I never really had this issue personally. And uh, it's sad for me to see other people that do because it's just such a massive hole. It's like they don't even know. It's like, how do you be a man? How can you be a man? They're not even sure how to do that. So they're spending $10,000 on a three-day course where a guy yells at them and so they can LARP around like they're Navy SEALs. So that's basically what ends up happening. And so they don't even know what being a man is. It's like from their idea, being a man is, uh, you know, having an expensive car or having three girlfriends or something like that because they have no socialization. They're not trained to understand these things. And big surprise, they don't. So, yeah, they need a YouTube tutorial. And so I think that's the reason why it happens. It's the lack of family structures. It's the lack of active parents. It's the lack of strong masculine role models in people's personal lives and also in media. Like if you want to look at a strong masculine, what is what what should be the pinnacle, like, uh, you know, peak performance of, of a man? It shouldn't be Andrew Tate. It should be Aragorn. There it is. Like, what are you doing sitting around trying to, like, have six different girlfriends? Like, what the fuck? Like, this is like, what is this? Yeah. And there's plenty of other people that are like that. Yeah. Mr. Rogers, people like that. Like, these are people who are actually like just normal average guys that are good that try to improve the lives of other people. And it's like there's this, uh, you know, combination of like, oh, well, you have to be dangerous or strong or something like that to be a man. Like, no, you do. it's just like it's. It's again, like this is a 14 year old's version on what being a man is, because a lot of these people are stuck developmentally at 14 years old. So there it is. That's the reason why I think it happens. That That, that is the fundamental. I think it's also the reason why uh, why there's like so many feminism problems, too, is because like women have like, you know, asshole dads and there's like guys in their life that like, again, because like, you know, guys grow up, they don't know how to act around girls. They make girls uncomfortable and then girls hate men. Right. That's just generally how things happen. Ned Stark. Yeah, there you go. Do you think fighting economic disparity is also a contributing aspect? Yeah, sure. It is. Absolutely. But I'm saying this is the biggest reason. And I think it's the the it is the reason that if this thing was solved, I think that it would cause more of an effect than anything else. And that's it for today on Sigma Traits. Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Support this channel through membership. You can also support through PayPal link in the description. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you all tomorrow.